Hey folks. Chef Kevin, by the Mexican music. Well, I'm going to be making the probably the most famous Mexican sauce. I'm making mole sauce tonight. And this is a very time consuming recipe. As you can see in front of me, there's tons of ingredients. It's very labor intensive but it's also very tasty. So let's take a closer look and we'll start this video. Okay, we got a lot of stuff here. Alright, to begin with I have homemade chicken stock. I have lard this is rendered pork fat. This has tons of flavor. If you want to keep this on the vegan side, you can use vegetable oil, but it won't be quite the same. I have fire roasted, sorry, fire roasted tomatoes with garlic. I have three different types of peppers here. I have chili ancho, chili pasilla, and chili mulatto. Salt, pepper, raisins, nuts. I have an onion, garlic, cloves, sesame seeds, cinnamon, a toasted roll. Who would have thought? And probably the most important ingredient is Mexican chocolate. This is by Abuelita. And I also have some almond butter. Did I mention the almond nuts? I don't know. Got so much stuff here. Okay. Um, yeah, these are all common ingredients in a mole. Of course, there's so many different recipes for moles. Um, the ingredients can vary. This is what I know how to do, so this is what I'm doing. And I know the results are going to be good. Okay, uh, first things first. I'm going to prep the chilies. Okay, here are my dried chilies. You can get these uh, in most supermarkets and definitely get them in the Mexican grocery stores. So I have two dried anchos, that's these, and I have three mulatos and four of the pasilla. So what I'm going to do is pull out the stem, tear them open. And I want to remove all the seeds. The seeds and the the top of it, the stem. Okay, I'm gonna finish this off. Okay, so here is my Dutch oven. This is a enameled cast iron cookware. And this is really ideal because it's heavy, it's thick wall, it distributes the heat evenly and it'll keep things nice and warm. Okay, that's been heating up for a while. I have my lard here. And as I said earlier, you don't have to use lard, you can use vegetable oil. But this is what an Italian grandmother would use. And I can prove it. 
That's the Italian grandmother. Okay, in goes about three teaspoons, sorry, three tablespoons of lard. I have a diced medium sized onion. I have three cloves of garlic, whole. You want them to be whole. You don't want them to be ground or cut in any, any shape or fashion because it may end up burning on you. And then I have my peppers. My pepper medley there. And what I'm going to do is just constantly stir this on a medium-high heat. Until it all softens up. The onions are going to become translucent, the garlic translucent, and the peppers will actually become lighter in color. Okay, I'm going to stir this just about constantly for the next four minutes. As I said, this is a time-consuming recipe, but it is what it is. So it's been about four minutes of constant stirring. It smells awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and pull it off and put it into this bowl. Okay, so I have my food processor here and I'm going to put all that right inside. Get in there. I'm going to add about a cup and a half of homemade chicken stock. If you don't have homemade, you can use the commercial. And if you want to keep it on the vegan side, you can switch out with uh, vegetable stock or water. But why use water? Water has no flavor. Okay, I'm going to keep this. Uh, on for about three minutes on high and try to liquefy it as much as possible. Okay, so I'm using the same Dutch oven. I just wiped out the interior. Gonna add a couple of tablespoons of lard. I have half a cup of sliced almonds. I couldn't get the whole almonds, but it doesn't really make a difference. So I'm gonna to toast these in the lard until they become brown around the edges. And this should just take a couple of minutes. Okay, the nuts are browning off nicely. I'm going to add my third cup of sesame seeds and half a cup of raisins. Typically raisins are used. You can use prunes if you'd like. Okay, I'm going to keep stirring this around for a couple more minutes. Okay, the, the nuts are nice and brown, the raisins have become plump, so I'm going to go ahead and add my one cup of garlic, fire roasted garlic tomato. Just going to stir that around for a couple of minutes, and I hope the fire alarm doesn't go off. 
Because we are making some smoke here. Okay, after a couple of minutes, I'm just going to take it out and put it back in this bowl. Okay, that's nicely blended. I'm just going to leave this aside. Now I'm going to grind my spices. And I'm using the first food processor ever created. A mocha hecte. Alright, now what I have inside the mocha hecte or the mortar and pestle is half a stick of cinnamon. I have about five or six cloves and about half a teaspoon of black pepper. And what I'm going to do is just crush them up. I want to make them a nice. I want to make a nice powder out of this. So it's going to take a few minutes. Okay, that really didn't take too long. Back to the range. It has been simmering for a good half hour and what I'm going to do next is run it through a strainer. Take out all those bits and pieces of leftover seeds, the flesh of the peppers and so on. So here I have a glass bowl and I have my strainer. So I'm just going to move this around and try to force the sauce through the strainer. And like I said, this gets out all the, the seeds that may still be in there, which I can see, and the, uh, the skin of the peppers. Now if you have a very high speed blender or you know the bullet blender you probably won't have to do this because it'll just chew it all up. Okay, I'm going to keep working on this until it's ready. The sauce has been simmering for an hour and that's pretty much the minimum time you need to simmer this for. The longer you let it simmer, the more the tastes come together. But I think an hour right now is adequate for me. Now comes probably the most critical part of the mole is the final seasoning. Now the final seasoning is done with two ingredients, sugar and salt. I didn't say this was health food. Okay, so I've been tasting it and I did not add any salt at all. And even the stock or the broth, the chicken broth, didn't have any salt in it. So I'm going to put a little salt in there, a little sea salt. It's probably about 
a good two tablespoons full, perhaps. I have some brown sugar here. I'm going to put that in. Now the chocolate had sugar in it already, so I don't want to add too much sugar. It's not supposed to be chocolate pudding. This is sort of like the yin and the yang, you know? You gotta get the right amount. So let's give this a test, taste test here. Mm. And that is pretty good. Just a little bit more sugar. You can use white sugar, which is bleached and refined, but I'm using the light brown. It has more taste to it because it has molasses in it. Nice. A little more salt. That tastes very good. It's not overly salted. It's not overly sweet. I can taste the nuance of the chocolate, the peppers. This is not supposed to be a hot sauce. So I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna let it go. I'm gonna put it in in a container and fridge it. And this is one of those sauces that tastes better the next day because the flavors meld together overnight, even without the heat. Okay, so the only thing next to do is to serve it. Can't eat it just like that. So I made some wings for the party and... Um, I thought that would be really appropriate to go along with the mole sauce. And unlike an actual chicken mole dish, I'm not going to soak it in the sauce because some people may not really appreciate the sauce, so I'm going to serve it with the sauce on the side. So I have some cilantro here on top of my barbecued wings. And it, that just adds a nice little touch. I mean, appearance is everything. Uh, that's why the cosmetic business is a multi-billion dollar business. Right, girls? Okay, so. Just going to drizzle some on top. This way you can see the wings, so you know exactly what they are. They have such a nice little crust on them that I don't want to uh, don't want to hide that. So let me let me have one of these. I'm dying to have one of these. Mm. 
Oh, this is super good. Mm. That is really good. It's not overly sweet. It's not overly salted. I can definitely taste the chocolate, but it's not overpowering as it should be. As it shouldn't be, I should say. And yeah, I can taste the spices. The combination of peppers is spot on, I think. So overall, this really turned out to be uh, quite a hit at the party last night, by the way. And I know this was a very long video, and I appreciate it if you watched watched it in its entirety. There was a lot of information out there. The sauce took me three hours between prep and cooking time, so yeah, it's worth it though. Make people happy with my food. Alright folks, well, if you like my videos, then uh, think about subscribing. How about new? Oh, shut up, Dr. Evil. Get off my channel. <laughs> Alright folks, take care.